your initial thoughts on the findings and recommendations of the CARE inquiry report? It's a very thorough report following a very thorough inquiry. And I think the recommendations are sound. The hardest recommendation is recommendation seven, which advises that the Jersey government take steps to overturn the perceptions of the Jersey way. Uh, that is the belief that some people are more equal than others and that the system, particularly the criminal justice system, is biased against people who do not have the right, right connections. Now, it doesn't say those perceptions are true, but it says that perception is out there and it's, it's a real issue that has to be addressed. And my word, that's true. Uh, it, it, that perception is out there and addressing it is going to be very hard for the Jersey authorities, I would have thought. Uh, it does also say that they should engage with the community when they're doing it. Uh, and I would have thought that there is a scope for people such as yourself and for campaigners to get involved in the recommendation seven issues that fall out of the committee's report. We talk about this and the, the Jersey way. Well, what's happened now is that um, I don't know if you've been keeping up with local politics just of late, but, uh, you know, there's been a complaint made. Um, Andrew Lewis can't be done for perjury. Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of that. And the Privileges and Procedures Committee are going to look into his conduct. Well, and there's only about three people asking for his resignation. Is that really, um, and of course, BBC are going to be looking at it. So it's inward looking again, isn't it? So is that going to, what, what do you think that's going to do for the Jersey way? There's a lot of things in that question. One, I'm aware that the, now aware that the Attorney General has expressed an opinion that the privileges, the privileges law overrides the law of perjury. I'll come back to that. Yeah. But so far as the Privileges and Procedures Committee are concerned, or anybody else that's dealing with this. This is a test. It's a test of Jersey's resolve to address Recommendation 7. Everybody's watching. And it, it's how they address the, the statement in the inquiry's report that Andrew Lewis lied. It's how they address that is, is part of that test. Because if this is not dealt with in a, in a way which is firm and concise, then people will say that the commitment to, to enforce Recommendation 7, to comply with Recommendation 7, is lacking. So let's see what happens. Um, have you got any thoughts? Because there's um, the likes of uh, Senator Sir Philip Barash and his ilk, I, I shouldn't wonder if you're alone, that basically are saying that the, here we go again, isn't it? it it's it's um, Recommendation 7 about the Jersey Way. Yeah. Philip Balash is basically saying, well, the, the Committee of Inquiry have um, been unfair to Andrew Lewis. So, <laughs> well, it, it, let's not say that he isn't entitled to an opinion, but the way that I see it, the, 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 if this is talked about too much, it rather looks as if the Jersey political establishment is staging some sort of rehearing of the case. And I don't think that's appropriate. I don't think it's appropriate to go back over a decision which has already been taken. Jersey paid millions for the Committee of Enquiry. I'm sure the Committee of Enquiry must have considered millions of words of evidence. And at the end of that evidence, they've come up with a decision. Now, to me, that's it. And the business now of the Jersey authorities is to decide what action they're going to take in consequence of that verdict, if you like, by the Committee of Inquiry. It's not to rehear the evidence. It, it's to decide what are you going to do now that the Committee of Inquiry has announced its decision, which it has. That's why I see the focus ought to be. But to go back to what I said earlier, this is a test of the resolve of the Jersey authorities to address recommendation seven let's see how they get on at the first fence yeah good point because i suppose the way it looks to me i don't know if you agree right now we've just paid somewhere in the region of 23 million pounds for a independent judge-led inquiry to come up with with with, with um with with uh answers and the rest of it 
So it looks to me, I don't know if you agree, that, um, well, basically what they're saying is, never mind this independent inquiry, uh, we're gonna, we're just gonna do it our own way still. Yes, let, let's break over it again. Well, I go back to it, it's a test, and the mm. world is watching. Mm. And as I suspect if campaigners such as yourself are watching, then we're interested in the outcome. And we're interested in the outcome because at some stage, the committee of inquiry, if it's agreed they're returning two years, will be looking for evidence. And what happens now is evidence. It's evidence of a commitment to recommendation seven. It's evidence of how we're starting off on this journey to overcome the negative perceptions of the Jersey way. And so whatever to do is evidence, and that is presented not only to the Committee of Enquiry, but to any other body that has an interest in the affairs of the island. Let, let's be transparent about it. And if, if, if they want to take a different view from the Committee of Enquiry, they want to say, well, we paid £23 million, but actually we scratched about over a weekend and we've come up with a different decision. Well, let them get on with it. But that is evidence about the commitment to Recommendation 7. So, yeah, the, the first test, like you say, will be this PPC thing now. Um, and we, we, we wait with that anticipation to see what they come up with. Uh, but there have been other developments, have there not? Can you tell us about this? Well, there's been an overlap in the sense that um, last week, I think it was Wednesday, I wrote to the Chief Minister, not because he's a legal authority, but because he's coordinating responses to the report, seeking to register a formal criminal complaint that Deputy Andrew Lewis had, according to the Committee of Enquiry, committed perjury. And I said that this could not be left hanging in the air, and I suggested that the matter be looked at by authorities, suitably qualified authorities, independent of Jersey. Now, whatever the Attorney General has said, that complaint is still on the desk, and I want a response. And just in case anybody thinks that I'm busybodying about this, let's remember, if it is true, as the inquiry said, that Andrew Lewis told lies, then he was telling lies about me. So don't think I'm going away on this issue. I have registered a complaint. I want a response. And I reserve the right to do whatever I think is appropriate with that response. I have asked for the matter to be looked at independently by authorities outside Jersey. That request still stands. Okay, but let me, and I'm quite sure you're, you, you've been through this a lot more than I have, um, let me tell you what, what response you're going to get. I'm sorry, Mr. Power, but our, my, my legal advice has told me that um, Andrew Lewis has privilege at um, uh, public inquiries. I can't take the, further, the, the matter any further. Well, if that's a response, that's a response. But it's evidence of the approach to Recommendation 7 which talks about dispelling all the suspicion and all the distrust. And throughout the report, it talks about there's a need for more transparency. There's a need to not only to be fair, but to demonstrate beyond all doubt that you're being fair. So I'm not going to prejudice what uh, the Chief Minister comes back with. And can I say nothing that I'm saying in any way implies that the current Chief Minister isn't totally com committed to implementing the outcome of the Committee of Inquiry report. But this is a hard test, but I, I'm not letting go of this one. And I mean, I have done enough research to know that there are legal opinions in the UK which say that parliamentary privilege should not be used by elected representatives to escape criminal prosecution. They, they, but, but the, the law, is unclear, it badly needs updating, and all those things are said. But out of this opinion of the Attorney General fall other things. For example, why was the, the oath administered to Andrew Lewis on the same basis as every other witness? Why did we 
Why were we all led to believe that he was giving evidence on the same basis as every other witness? Nobody said, um, well, Deputy Lewis, we hope you're going to tell the truth when you give evidence, but actually, because you're a state's member, you can tell lies if you want to. We're, we were all given the impression that everybody was bound to tell the truth. We were misled. A second point is that is this interpretation of the law unique to Jersey, or is it the same across the British Isles? Does it apply to the UK? And if it does, what are the implications of that? For example, there will be a public inquiry into the Grenfell Tower disaster. Are we being told that when survivors of the fire give evidence, they are bound to tell the truth, but government ministers are allowed to tell lies without consequence? Is that what we're being told about the state of the law? And if it is, shouldn't someone tell the people at Grenfell Tower about it so they can give some thought to it? You know, it, it just seems to me that, that this is that, that wrapping this up within Jersey is just a little bit too neat, and I'm not lying down over it. I go back to what I said before. If the committee of inquiry is right, and it should be for that amount of time and money, and Andrew Lewis told lies, he told lies about me. I want that putting right, and I'm not going away. Mr. Powell, I think we should leave it there. We've done 10 minutes here, um, or more than that. We've done nearly 12 minutes. And, um, well, uh, one, I suppose one last question I'd like to ask is, obviously, once your dealings with our chief minister has, has uh, are completed, for instance, or if not sooner, would you um, be prepared to share your letter to him with us so we can publish it on, on, um, on our blog. Well, I think that there should be, it's a spirit, again, you go back to recommendation seven. There should be complete transparency about this. And so it wouldn't be right to publish correspondence which contained personal information which was sensitive in some way. Well, I can't imagine how that would be the case. I, 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 I would think that in the interest of transparency, in the interest of Recommendation 7, all of it should be published. All of it should be in the public domain, and it should be there. But the, you know, I'm, I'm fascinated to know for any lawyers who who watching this or, or, or who read the blog who might want to offer a different opinion on the legalities of it. Yes, I believe it should be transparent, and I believe it should be available to any, everybody. Why not? I've got nothing to hide. If anybody else has anything to hide, let them say what it is. Mr. Power, once more, thanks very much, and I'm sure we will um, be hearing from you very soon again. Thank you.